For the following exercises, graph the given function by hand. Okay, so we've done tons of these questions already. If you guys want to start from the beginning, go to the playlist, check the description in, in below. Um, it's called absolute value functions and check out those videos. Okay. This one is just going to kind of be like a run through. So in order to do, let's just start with this one. This one is F of X equals negative times the absolute value of X plus four minus three. The first thing that you have to realize is what's the standard graph of this. The function here is the absolute value sign. So the standard graph would be F of X equals the absolute value of X, which is the same thing as Y equals the absolute value of X. Remember F of X and Y is the same thing. And that is this graph. Three, two, one, boop. There it is. It's a V and it goes right into the middle of the origin and it has um, coordinates that are the same number. So one, uh, zero comma zero, one comma one, two comma two, three comma three. And then it's just basically the flip. So negative one comma one, negative two comma two, negative three comma three, et cetera, et cetera. Next thing that you have to do is you have to match all of the transformations that you see in your function that are not included in the original. So if I work from left to right, I see that I have a negative number or just a negative outside. I have a plus four inside the function and I have a negative three outside of the function. So there's three different shifts that are going to go on here. All right. So this negative, if we just can write this all down, this negative is basically being multiplied. It's a negative one times by the number or the function, right? There's a plus four, which is inside the function. And then there's a negative three or a minus three that is outside the function. Generally speaking, you always want to work from inside to outside. However, if you see a negative and just a negative, not like a number that's being multiplied, if you see just a negative, I like to do that one first. A negative value in front, remember, is always just a reflection. It's a reflection about the x-axis. So that means that instead of it being a V, it's just going to be rotated downward. And it's going to be like the inverse of what you see. So what's the inverse of a V? It's a mountaintop, right? It would be like this. You're reflecting everything from that X axis. So when you see a negative value, you will turn that V into a beautiful mountaintop. And what happens? Basically, you're just rotating this uh, 180 degrees. So this would be like 90. And then we have a complete flip. And then you just have to bring it down. That is the negative. So we did one of them already. Oops, we did one transformation. And it still has the one and the two, like one and one, two and two, three and three. But now it would just be one comma negative one, two comma negative two, three comma negative three, and then negative one, negative one, negative two comma negative two, negative three comma negative three. The next thing is let's work on this inside function. Any numbers plus or minus, so like plus four or minus four, these are always horizontal shifts. And just know the rule of thumb is that if you're shifting to the right, you have a negative. There would be a negative four in this case. If you're shifting to the left, that's a plus value, all right? So in this case, we see a plus four. So I know that I'm shifting to the left how many times? four times because that's the number tells you how much you're going to shift. So I'm going to take my graph and I'm just going to go to the right four times. So let's check it out. One. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go to the left four times. So one, two, 
three, four. There you go. This shift is done. Now we have one more shift to do, the outside shift. Outside shifts, numbers that are outside of the functions, are vertical shifts. Just know that if you're going upward, it's a plus by that number. And if you're shifting downward, it's a minus. So here I have a minus 3, which means that I will just be going downward. How many times? Three times. So I'm going to pick up my graph, and I'm going to go down 3. So 1, ooh, this looks nice, because you can kind of see the before and after. 1, 2, and 3. So now I'm just going to do that. 1, 2, 3. And mine kind of went off the graph or off the paper. So what you can do is you can just kind of like erase. I'll just erase, and then I just add new lines. And there it is. So these are like your new points. Beautiful. So this is your graph f of x equals negative times the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3. Yay! Awesome job, guys. One more. So same exact idea, right? This is f of x equals 1 half times the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3. So you always got to start off with your most simplest graph, and that's this guy, the v. That's just the absolute value of x, and it's 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, right? And then the opposite on the other side. Now, you know, take note as to the differences. I have a 1 half in the front, so that's different. I have a plus 4, and I have a minus 3. Okay, so since it's not just a negative, I can't just, you know, just reflect it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inside function first. Remember, inside functions are horizontal shifts. And as we stated before, going to the left was a plus. And it's a plus 4, so it's the same exact shift. I'm going to the left, because left is a positive. How many times? I'm going to go over there four times. So let's do it. I'm going to grab my, my graph, and I'm going to go to the left four times. One, two, three, and four. Beauty. So that shift is done. Now I say to myself, okay, what am I going to do next? Am I going to do this one half? or I'm going to minus 3. Do it the way PEMDAS tells you, right? You would technically multiply by 1 half, and then you would minus the 3. So I'm going to work with this 1 half first. I'm going to do that shift first. And now what does this mean when it's not just a minus in there? What is multiplying the number by? This is when you're going to stretch your graph vertically. So you're going to pull it up and downward. How are you going to do that? You're going to take all of your y values and times it by the number that they told you. In this case, we're going to times it by 1 half. So in essence, this is the same thing as taking your y value and dividing it by 2, right? y times 1 half is the same thing as y divided by 2. So you don't have to do all of them. You could just take a couple of them. So let's do this point. This point's y value was a 0. So 0 divided by 2 is still a 0. So my new point would still be here. But now for these guys, both of these points, you have a y of 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 over 2, right? A half. So I'm actually going to move these new points to now a half. So they come down here. That would be a 1 half on the y and a 1 half on the y. Now let's just try it with this. These points, right? Let me just make them black so that you guys get the hang of it. The black are the old points. The red's going to be the new points. These both had a y of 3. So 
3 divided by 2, or 3 times 1 half, is 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 1 and a half, 1 1.5. So I have to take those points and move them to 3 over 2, or 1 and 1 half, or 1 1.5. So that would be over here. Let's see. 1, and then I got to go in the middle. Something like this. Something like this. And you kind of get the idea. So the next one would be, I believe, let's see, the next one would be here. These are one, two, three. Oh, actually, hold on. Wait, one, two. Sorry, guys. I was talking about these points. These are the threes, right? Yeah, because if I go over here, this y is one, two, three. So these points have to go to three over two. So let me just do that. So that would be one and a half, one and a half. And then let's just circle back on these. Sorry about that, guys. These actually are a y of two. So two divided by two is one. So these have to go to y equals 1. So I'm going to drop them down here. And now you guys see. There you go. So you can kind of see the new graph. I'm going to get rid of the old one and all the points. And now you see that you have a nice graph like this. So let me draw that new one in. So maybe something like this. There you go. Beautiful. Okay. That takes care of that shift. Now we just have to do the minus three. Just like we said before, these are outside, right? So these are your verticals. It's a minus. So a minus means you're going down. How much? Down three. So I'm going to take my whole graph. Let's see if I could catch it. And I'm going to shift down three. So here we go. Whoop. Let's see. I'm going to shift the whole thing down three. So I'm going to go down one, down two, down three. There you go. And I did my three shifts. So this would be the new function of f of x equals one half times the absolute value of x plus four minus three. And there you guys go. Look at that. What do you think, guys? Hopefully this helped you. As you get more practice and do the questions in the playlist, you guys are going to be great at this, all right? So let me know in the comments what you thought. If you want to help us out, please hit that subscribe button. It takes two seconds. As always, I hope you guys have a great day. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. And math is fun. I will see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.